Welcome to my Audio Tips and Tricks YouTube channel. I've been an audio enthusiast and music lover for over 40 years. Over this period I've learned a few tips and tricks for improving the sound quality of my hi-fi music system and would like to share some of them with you. In 2022 I posted a video titled Do RCA Interconnect Cables Improve with Age? I suggested there were seven factors that affect the performance of an audio cable. In my opinion, the most important ones are wire conductivity. Silver and copper provide the highest electrical conductivity of all metals. Wire purity. Oxygen-free copper with 99.9999% purity or higher retards oxidation that can reduce conductivity and performance over time. Length. Shorter lengths have less resistance and capacitance which can affect frequency response. Another important factor that has emerged is shielding. Not that many years ago an interconnect cable was comprised of a single conductor for the positive signal and a metallic shield for the negative signal. Today's interconnect cables can have several layers of metallic and non-metallic shielding layers to prevent airborne RF and EMF radiation from corrupting the signal being carried by two or maybe three separate conductors. Perhaps today's home Wi-Fi networks and devices, along with mobile cellular devices, are releasing more airborne RF EMF radiation into our homes, thus requiring greater shielding protection. There are RF EMF smartphone apps that can detect and measure radiation levels. Try using these apps to detect and measure radiation levels near your hi-fi system. If you feel your interconnect cables are inadequately shielded against RF EMF noise, Try wrapping a layer of Faraday fabric around the length of the cable. See my videos on the use of Faraday fabric for hi-fi systems. Cardus is a U.S. manufacturer of high-quality audio cables. They sell a broad range of bulk cable. The Cardus 2 by 21 gauge cable uses Cardus's Grade 1 Ultra Pure Copper Wire. This is the same wire used in their factory assembled cables but those use more sophisticated cable designs. Cardus claims their manufacturing process is superior to those used to pr produce typical oxygen-free copper and Ono continuous cast copper. Wire strands are LITS treated, which means individual strands have an insulation coating that needs to be removed by tinning the leads at very high temperature. Cardus cables are non-directional, but they recommend signal flow should be in the same direction as the lettering on the outside of their cables. I used this cable to make several short lengths of RCA interconnects. I used the red wire for the right channel positive signal, black wire for the left channel positive signal. I split the braid shield into two wires for the right and left channel negative signal wires. In other words, a pair of RCA interconnects housed in the same cable sheath. Canare. Canare is a Japanese cable manufacturer catering primarily to the pro audio market. The L4E6S is a shielded microphone cable comprised of four 24 gauge copper wires. Some vendors describe this as a 21 gauge cable but this assumes the wires are twinned into two pairs. Today I'm going to make a pair of cables using this 24 inch long Canary L4E6S uh, quad cable. I'm going to be using these set of KLEI RCA plugs. These were invented by uh, Keith Louie Eichmann of the Eichmann bullet plug fame back in the early 2000s. This cable comes with a <coughs> braided shield and I'm going to remove about four inches 
of wire from each end. Uh, the shield wire typically is uh, attached to the return wire or the negative wire, uh, <clears throat> but depending on whether you want both ends grounded, you could in fact uh, only ground one end. By compressing the braid inwards towards this way, uh, I can expand the braid a little bit and open up a, a little hole where I can pull out some of the um, twine or string uh, separators and my objective is to pull out the signal wires. So here's one signal wire. Cut off this string. Use a multimeter to figure out which pair of wires will be used for the right channel and which pair of wires will be used for the left channel. So here's a blue wire. Let's see where that corresponds on the other side. Not this blue wire. It's going to be this blue wire. I will mark this with a magic marker. Same here. Let's see where the white wire goes. Here's the white wire. And did I strand it in the right way? No, I didn't. So this must be the white wire. I've wrapped the unused braided shield around the, uh, the two pairs of wires and I'm going to cover it with this heat shrink tubing on this one side. On the other side I've separated the braided shield into uh, two sets of wires and I've wrapped it around each pair and around the white wires right at the tip here. I'm going to tin each of the bare wires here. I'm going to solder the blue wire to the positive pin which is the center pin and the white return wire to a tab. 24 gauge wire is suitable for making interconnect cables that carry signals from a phono cartridge to a phono preamp. I used one white and one blue wire for the right channel and the remaining white and blue wires for the left channel. This RCA phono interconnect cable uses the braided metallic shield as an external ground wire at both ends. It sounded comparable to my AudioQuest Wildcat phono cable. Thinking that twinning the wires together to achieve a 21 gauge conductor would result in even better sound, I used two blue wires for the positive signal conductor and two white wires for the negative signal conductor. Each cable became a single interconnect. When I connected the cables between the turntable and phono preamp, I couldn't believe my ears. High and low frequencies were rolled off. A quick check with a multimeter showed that all my solder connections were good. After a bit more investigation, I concluded that twinning the wires reduced conductor resistance by 50%, but also doubled the capacitance. Resistance and capacitance can act as frequency filters. Wire capacitance may not be an issue with cables that carry 2 volt line level signals between audio components, but can be an issue when carrying 0.4 millivolt signals from a moving coil phono cartridge. The relatively high capacitance of the Canari 
L4E6S cable could affect the frequency response of low-level audio signals such as from a phono cartridge. In future, I might also try the Mogami 2534 quad microphone cable as, according to these specifications, it has much lower capacitance per meter than the Canare L4E 6S. While I did not do any sound comparisons with the Cardus interconnect cables, they sounded fine to my ears and I wouldn't hesitate to use this cable for future projects. Conclusions In 2022 I used mostly brand name factory made interconnect cables. Today I'm using mostly DIY interconnect cables. DIY interconnect cables can sound as good as name brand ones depending on your ears and the quality of your audio system. One thing to note is that prices of bulk cable have increased significantly in recent years. The Cardus 2x21 cable that I paid $9 per foot for in 2021 is now $27 per foot. Maybe some of these tips will be useful to you in improving the sound of your audio system and enhancing your music listening experience. Happy listening!